So here we have Ed's rig, stripped out, no keyboards on it, and let's go over the, let's go over the build process of the rig. We know that he has three tiers, one, two, and three. Now, the main keyboard is down on the bottom tier. That's the, that's the big 88 key monster. The average, you know, 88 key keyboard weighs about 60 pounds. So we know that we need something that's gonna be sturdy enough to hold that. And we need to add two more tiers above that. So what we first need to do is create our support system. Now that's done by creating the legs, the feet, the actual part that touches the ground. I know that since I have so much, so many, so many inches in depth that I have to cover over three keyboards, I need to make sure that the feet on the ground are gonna cover at least that amount so it doesn't get top heavy and tip over. We don't want the keyboard rig tipping over on him while he's trying to play. So I, get a, I use a 30 inch bar to cover the foot on the ground. So I needed to start with the middle keyboard first. This middle support, which is actually the front support, needed to be the first one that I started with because everything else is kind of set based off of that. They each have their own heights, but this is the most important one to start with. The keyboard that he needed here, he needed it to be about 38 inches from the bottom of the keyboard to the ground. So the next thing we needed to do was add the top tier. Now, Ed needed the back of the keyboard to be 51 and a half inches off the ground. Now this is a little different from the secondary, the, the middle keyboard because the back was tilted, the angle of the keyboard's tilted, it's not flat. So he needed to be 51 and a half inches from the ground and we have a 43 and a half inch bar. It doesn't really sound like it's very close, but as soon as you stack it on top of the T-leg, that's two inches, and then as soon as you add a crossbar to the top, that's another two inches, and then as soon as you add the keyboard arms, that's another inch and a half or two inches. So it starts to add up, especially when you angle the keyboard, it lifts the back up. Turns out, I had to cut some down. So I got the height, I got the angle that he wanted, and then we're like, okay, well we need this to drop down to 51 and a half. I measured exactly how many inches it was, took the top tier off, and then cut right where I needed to to make it for, uh, 51 and a half. Now, the main keyboard, which is the bottom tier, that was easy because all I had to do was attach these two horizontal crossbars, which became the main supports for the actual main keyboard. Now all I had to do was just slide these clamps up or down. Since all the work had been done in building these top two tiers, all I had to do was just raise this arm up or down to the height that it needed to be. So let's talk about stability and how all these parts are inter interconnected to create the stability. We've got the two main support bars attached to one long foot, so there's stability down there. We've got the two, cro the two support bars connected together by the, the bottom keyboard support arm. Now you're making, a, you're making a pretty much a square, so that's rock solid. There's no way that that's going to move. Now you've created one side, and all you're doing is creating two sides and connecting, to, connecting them together with two crossbars, which is one and two. Now, that's sturdy that way, but <clears throat> to increase stability even more, let's add a third crossbar. And to add a little flash and a little flare to the keyboard rig, I threw a curved bar right down on the front, so you know if the, uh, the guitar player wants to come up and stick his foot on it and rock out, he's got a, he's got a footstool. So I used one particular type of clamp, but in two different styles. And the type of clamp that I used was a 90 degree angle clamp. Now, these fit this whole rack together in the shape of a square. If you look at it from the front, it's pretty much in the shape of a square. And there's nothing stronger than that. There's no way that you can break that. These are fixed clamps, and there are no moving parts on it except for the actual wing nuts that actually that tighten or loosen the clamp. What I used to connect the frame together was the SCGCR QT. It's a right angle clamp, but it's a T-clamp, which means you butt both bars up together so that there's nothing offset. The SCGCRA is the second style clamp that I used. Now this is a right angle clamp, but it offsets the bars from one another as opposed to keeping everything on the same plane like the SCGCR QT. Now what's beneficial about this clamp is that you can position it on the bar whether it's at the end or in the middle, you can do that on both sides. The main part of the rack, the frame, was built out of the T-clamp, and the, uh, the, bottom, the bottom tier was built out of right angle clamps because I needed to be able to adjust height and depth for that, for that main keyboard. I needed to be able to push it in, or I needed to be able to lower it. The main clamp that I used to mount the top, the top tier and the middle tier was the SCGEMC. They're electronic mounting clamps, and they come as a pair, and they're about 
15 to 16 inches long, and there are knurled rubber stoppers that allow you to adjust the depth of where you want to position the keyboard on the actual clamp arm. Now, I use those on the top and on the middle rig. Now, since the, um, the main keyboard, the lower tier, was the heaviest one, I wanted something a little bit different to support that. I feel more comfortable with a 60-pound keyboard having four connection points sitting like, a, like on a table. So I just extended this bar out, and I used um, one of our rubber mounting gripping feet. And they're the same feet that we actually use on our T-legs for the racks, but they have both ends cut out. They're, not, just to, they're not, not meant to fit right over the end of a bar. They're meant to slide onto a bar and position however you need. So I'm using that to support my keyboard. And I've got, <laughs> it's not my keyboard, it's actually Ed's keyboard. But um, I'm using that, I'm using four of them so I can position it and support it at four different points on the lower tier. To my man, Ed, right here, thank you, man. You came up with a wonderful design that I'm gonna put in my repertoire. I'm taking that from you, Ed, by the way, just so you know. Um, and I'm naming it the Command Center, whether you like it or not. But anyways, for those of you that have any questions regarding how to program a keyboard, how to get crazy sounds, whatever it may be keyboard related, Ed Diaz is your man. He's got his own sites, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Ed Diaz Keys, and that's keys with an S, not with a Z. Don't get cute. See you next time, guys. We're out of here.